What's up guys? I'm Laura from Reading in Bed. Today is Thursday, December 7th. Did you guys just open 7? Yeah. Okay, it's December 7th. I'm so messed up this week. This week continues to be cursed. Yesterday my alarm didn't go off. I was an hour late for work and then I had a meeting that went kind of horribly wrong. <laughs> so it's Thursday. Who knows what today's gonna bring? At least we're up on time. At least the car is working. So we'll just see what happens. Um, but I'm here to talk about story number six from yesterday. This is called Dogs of Cuba <coughs> by Edie Medev. Um, and then we're going to reveal day seven story in just a sec. So um, it's kind of nice that the two other uh, booktube channels that are reviewing these stories do them before me. They tend to do them day of. I do them just the day after. And uh, both uh, Cheryl and Anne talked about how literary this story is. And I would agree because it's got some really, really good writing. It's also got some really sort of impenetrable writing where I wasn't sure what was going on. So this is the first of these stories this year or any year that has prompted me to start underlining and you can also see I've got some question marks in there. I don't like I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> um, but a lot of things underlined as well and I think like there's a lot of question marks right and then just sort of a lot of nothing. <laughs> um, things that didn't grab me until page 10. Page 10 to 16 of this story about a woman uh, who, you know, used to date or, you know, something, this boxer, they both lived in Cuba, they've since um, both come to the States, they had a daughter together, but they're not together anymore, she's married to someone else, but uh, she is still involved um, with this boxer. And uh, the first line that really got me was um, her just after she'd gone to see him fight, and just after she's like thinking she really should just leave um, but instead, I stayed on in the chirogenic stadium, knowing who I was right then. A woman rooting for flight, unable to leave, with all that had led me ringside long ago rotten. I really like that. Um, and, uh, and then the best line for me is when she does eventually go up to his hotel room and she, you know, stands there and tries to, you know, think about what she wants to say and if she's going to knock and eventually she goes in. And then he commanded me to make myself comfortable, have a seat. But I kept standing because when has sitting on a hotel bed ever created the proper conditions for serious discussion? I mean, that's pretty much a, one of those universal truths, isn't it? Um, and then, so the last couple pages of the story I really liked. Uh, by the end, she is already going, another woman stumbling down the hall towards the elevator. Uh, and I think if... Like, I don't relate to the particulars of this story, but if you've ever weighed it when you should have left <laughs> or, uh, you know, gone somewhere and you know you really shouldn't have, um, if you've ever had to try or tried to have a serious discussion while sitting on a hotel bed, I think you're going to uh, you're gonna get this and you're going to like it, even though it was very difficult to get into. And for a short story, I mean, usually short stories, you just, like, get right in there, but this really took a good 10 pages to warm up to. Um, but I did really enjoy it in the end. So let's take a look at number seven. Number seven, what do you guys think? Any predictions? Nope, not me. Not you? Not you, Henry? Well, let's check it out. Oh, I think there's going to be sand. I think there's going to be sand? Well, this is called Edna in Rain by Marie Helen Bertino. Now I think there's going to be rain. Now you think there's going to be rain. Well, that's a pretty good guess. Okay, so she is the author of the novel 2 a.m. at the Cat's Pajamas, which I've heard tons about, but I haven't read. Um, and there's a whole, the, the bio's quite long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. Let's see if I can read the very beginning. Um, I think so. Okay, so I was walking to higher grounds when the first one fell from the sky. A whirring sound preceded him, so I was able to sidestep to avoid a direct blow. He hit the ground at a distressing angle. Kevin Grotemeyer, I said, are you okay? He was more than okay, living with his partner and their twin boys in Harrisburg. And I said, amazing, Harrisburg. Kevin Grotemeyer was the one who could do the thing where you flip the girl from top to bottom without letting go. This necessitates the upper body strength of a wrestler and the focus of a physicist. <laughs> we'll leave it there. <laughs> okay, so this is a very short story. We Oh, it's just five pages. Well, this won't take me long at all. Um, so I'm going to take that to work with me and I'll put this one back. And uh, boys, any outro for this morning? We're going to end the video. <coughs>
Oh, no, I think they're too tired today. You know, by the time we get to the end of the week, we are just, we don't have a lot of energy left, do we? No. You all right? There, I did the outro. That, that was the outro? Coughing. You coughing? Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow.